Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. All right, 20 hormones that increase or decrease DHT. I get a lot of questions about how to boost DHT. Um, even though I made so many posts, quizzes, videos about how to increase DHT, I still get that question a lot. So I'm going to do a multi, uh, multi video series, right? Multiple parts where we're going to look at hormone factors, which is this video, uh, nutritional factors, lifestyle factors, uh, all the different things that increase dihydrotestosterone, our most powerful androgen. Um, so this one is going to focus on hormones. Obviously, I'm only going to put 20 hormones. I'm not going to include more uh, because this list will be too long. Right? It'll be up to like 70 items. Uh, and I only put the basic ones that most people know. Uh, so I left out stuff like androstenedione. I, I left out things that uh, the average person is not aware of. If there's demand, I might make a second part where I go over the advanced hormones that are not so beginner friendly but you guys know how youtube works if you do an advanced video you know it doesn't push it out so you guys should know these basic ass hormones by now now let's rank them based on their ability to increase dht and for those of you guys who are worried about hair loss i've answered that so many times hair loss yes obviously dht is a main hormone in hair loss but it depends on your genetics and environmental factors and i've showed endless studies that explain that okay so do not worry about hair loss unless you have the genetics for hair loss and obviously you have the environmental factors uh if dht alone cause hair loss apart from genetics and androgen receptors and environmental factors then we'll all lose our hair during puberty because that's when we have a massive increase in dht for years right yeah you don't see teenagers walking around you know fucking norwood 50. but anyway Let's get straight to the video. Oh, by the way, the tail list. So, again, basic bitch. That's for, like, the basic hormones, right? Because you guys know hormones are very complex, right? Uh, one hormone influences another one directly and also indirectly. Some are needed for just for us to live, for basic life. Some have more specialized roles. So, anything that goes in basic bitch is going to be a hormone that just, like, it does so many things. You just need it just to be alive. It's a basic-ass hormone. Um, below, so if I put something at finasteride maxing, obviously I'm joking, but... If I put a hormone here, it means that it's actually doing the opposite. It's going to actually lower DHT. Smeagol maxing is going to crush DHT and obviously just cash for yourself. That one is like, you know, if a hormone goes here, then it's the, it's the worst hormone for DHT. And obviously, the reverse is true. Now we're talking, so that slightly or significantly increases DHT. DHT maxing, so that gives you a massive increase in DHT. And as always, him maxing. That is the most potent uh dht maxing hormone all right so let's get straight to it let's start with prolactin ah uh, unfortunately i always i always told you guys there's no good or bad hormones right it's all about the inverter u curve some hormones are good when they're elevated and sometimes if they're too low uh they're also they're also good and vice versa some hormones are bad when they're too high but and they're also bad when they're too low okay so prolactin gets a bad rap for obvious reasons but you also need it for so many other functions including sexual health right you don't want it too high you don't want it too low but for the sake of this video i gotta put prolactin at finasteride maxing right that it actually lowers dht and by the way i'm referring to dht signaling not just dht levels because if you're freaking watch on my channel you know that it's not all about blood it's not about the hormone levels in the blood it's about the net status uh net androgen status in this case all right so before I bore you to death, repeating the same thing over and over again. Let's go to the next one. Progesterone. Right? I'm going to put progesterone and now we're talking. Right? Mainly because it's a precursor. Right? You need progesterone to make your other androgens. Right? And obviously DHT is made from testosterone and testosterone is made from those precursors. So progesterone is here. I'll also put, if androstenedione was on this list, I will put it up there as well. Pregnenolone, same thing. Right? You cannot make your hormones without a pregnenolone. Right? And when I say hormones, I'm referring to your androgens. So, no pregnenolone, no testosterone, no testosterone, no DHT. Uh, and I could go into nerdy details and the backed up halfway and all that stuff, but again, you still need progesterone and pregnenolone. Next, we have vitamin D. I gotta put, I wanna put vitamin D at basic bitch, mean, mainly because you just need it for so many things. It's like insulin, right? You need it for so many things. But I'm gonna put it at now we're talking, right? Uh, you need a certain amount of vitamin D to have optimal DHT levels. Mainly because you have vitamin D receptors almost everywhere in the body, including your latex cells, which is obviously where testosterone production is taking place. So I got to put this at now. We're talking. I'm going to put it higher than those two. 
Next, we have uh, DHEA. I got to put this at DHT maxing. DHEA is very important for DHT. Obviously, it's also a precursor, um, but we have a lot of evidence showing that DHT, DHEA sorry, um, is uh, mandatory for DHT levels. Right? Um, not just because it's a precursor. That's obviously the main reason, but uh, it's, you know, if, that was, if that was the only reason, then I'll put this one higher as well. Uh, and unfortunately, it's a very underrated hormone. You know, again, I can't make a lot of videos on it because the demand is so freaking low. You know, if I make a video, hey, how to increase dehydro, epi, and on zero views. So uh, DHEA, very important for uh, DHT max. And that includes, obviously, DHEA sulfate. Next, we have uh, insulin. I got to put insulin at now we're talking. You need insulin for obvious reasons. You can, I wanted to put that basic base because it has so many freaking things in the body. But, you know, I got to put it higher for uh, uh, for DHT max simply because of its effects on bringing glucose into the cells, bringing amino acids into the cells, uh, lowering protein breakdown. Remember, DHT is made through 5-alpha reductase, which is a protein, uh, which obviously is made from a gene. And you need insulin. The moment, we, the moment we start talking about genes and protein, insulin goes high. Uh, of course, you don't want it too high, right? You don't want insulin resistance. Next, we have cortisol. Oh, boy, I got to put this as smegal maxing, right? You do not want high, constantly elevated cortisol levels if you want high DHT. It's actually going to give you the opposite. Uh, next, we have testosterone. Obviously, obviously, I got to put this at uh, DHT maxing, right? You know, how are you going to make DHT without testosterone? Again, you could make it using the backdoor pathway, but uh, the predominant, the primary pathway is through testosterone. Um, let's see. Next, let's look at T4. I'm going to put T4 at, now we're talking, and you're going to find out why in a minute. All right, you want to have enough T4, even though it's not the active version, you want to have enough T4 in order to have elevated DHT levels, right? Mainly because thyroid hormones play a huge role in increasing uh, gene transcription, as well as the transcription and translation of genes, such as 5-alpha reductase. And that brings us to T3. And now I gotta put this at the very top here, right? You gotta have enough T3, and that's the only reason why T4 is higher because you need T4 to make T3. Um, of course, I didn't put reverse T3 here because it's a little too advanced for you guys, but yeah, you definitely need high levels of T3. In fact, people that have a hyperthyroidism where they have a condition where they're producing way too much T3, they also tend to have crazy high DHT levels. Um, and in that case, it's actually not a good thing because uh, they have way too much. So definitely optimize thyroid function if you want to have high DHT levels uh, and obviously signaling. Next, we have luteinizing hormone. Again, I got to put this in now we're talking, mainly because you need LH to kickstart the whole androgen uh, production process, right? Without LH, you're not going to have enough testosterone. Again, the body has methods of producing testosterone without LH. I think I covered it in, in posts or quizzes or whatever. But again, it's the primary pathway, so let's not be too technical. Because, um, yeah, the, ma the, the main reason why your body needs LH is mainly because of CAMP. You know, it in increases uh, cyclic adenosine monophosphate in the latex cells and blah, blah, blah. And that kickstarts the whole process of converting cholesterol into um, testosterone, obviously, progesterone, pregnenolone, blah, blah, blah. So that's the main reason why we need LH. But the body has ways of doing this without LH. Uh, it's just it's not as efficient. So I'm going to put this up here. Um, next, we have uh, DHEA sulfate. Obviously, I'm going to put this, uh, where is it, right next to DHEA because it's the most stable version of DHEA. Um, next, we have, well, DHT itself. Uh, I'm obviously going to put that at him maxing, right? It's him. This video is about yours truly. So, uh, and the funny thing about DHT is that DHT actually increases 5-alpha reductase activity. So, it has this crazy a uh, positive loop instead of a negative feedback loop. It's actually a positive loop. Now, of course, you could argue that DHT can lower DHT, you know, mainly through negative feedback loop, right, going through the brain, going through the pituitary, and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's, it's not as important. It's not as potent as estrogen. Estrogen is the main regulator of negative feedback. So I'm going to put this up here, mainly because of its effect, again, mainly because it's DHT itself, but also because of its effects on the estrogen receptor and on 5-alpha reductase. Uh, which is the enzyme that makes DHT. So funny how it works, right? You need 5-AR to make DHT, and DHT also has effects on increasing 5-AR. Next, we have estradiol. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I got to put this as maxing, maxing, right? Uh, too high. Obviously, you need some estrogen to live, but if your estrogen levels are too high, you're going to be in for rude awakening because, like I just said, it's going to lower 
your total testosterone levels, mainly through a negative feedback loop, um, but it's also gonna increase uh, sex hormone binding globulin, right? Which is gonna reduce free testosterone, and you're gonna see why free testosterone is very important in a minute. So estradiol, smigo maxing, right? You don't want it too high. You need some of it, but you don't want too much. Uh, next, we have TSH, that's thyroid. Again, this is the hormone that makes your body produce thyroid. So obviously, I'm going to put it in now. We're talking, right? Same reason why LH is up there. Uh, can't make T T4 and obviously T3 without TSH. Uh, next, we have sex hormone binding globulin. Now, this one is tricky, guys. This one is tricky. Most people thought I would put it down here or down here. But this one is very tricky because you need SHBG, obviously, to move you know your androgens around the blood. Um, you need SHBG to actually increase total testosterone, believe it or not. It's going to lower free testosterone, but you need it to increase total testosterone. You also need SHBG to increase total DHT because DHT has a higher binding affinity to SHBG. So um, it's not as evil as people think it is. Right? Yes, it lowers the bioavailability of the hormone, but it also keeps it from being broken down too early. Right? Very hard to have high total DHT and high total testosterone with a high SHBG. Uh, it also prevents estradiol. Uh, from lowering LH, you know, through negative feedback loop. So I don't want to put it down here. Uh, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put it in the middle. All right, I'm gonna put that basic bitch. Um, in fact, oof, nah, I can't. I can't because you need SHBG to have high DHT levels. Uh, and again, if it's, if SHBG is too high, right now you screwed. Now you're gonna have lower free T, lower free DHT. Um, but you could also argue that you're also going to have lower free estradiol, and that's the, that's really the one we're trying to lower. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put that now we're talking. Right? I know it's going to confuse a lot of you guys, but you know maybe if I make an advanced video on how SGBG actually works, you guys will understand. But you do need sex hormone binding globulin to have high DHT levels. Uh, in fact, in people that have insulin resistance or obesity and have very, very low SGBG, their, their, um, their total testosterone gets crushed and their DHT also gets crushed for the reasons I explained earlier. So I'm gonna put this up here, right? Because of its effect on lowering free estradiol and everything else that I mentioned. Next, we have IGF-1. Oh my goodness, I gotta put this at him maxing. You need IGF-1 to have a lot of DHT, absolutely. Mainly because of its effects on RNA translation, blah, blah, blah. I watch my videos on protein synthesis and how it works, but you need IGF-1 uh, to have high levels of DHT. And I'm gonna put growth hormone at DHT maxing, mainly because of its effect on IGF-1, right? It also has other effects on uh, the steroidogenesis pathway, but the main reason it's that high is because of its effects on IGF-1. So you cannot have low IGF-1 levels, both intracellular and serum levels, if you wanna have super high DHT. Next, we have FSH. I wanna put FSH at basic bitch, right? It has a small role in testosterone production, right? Obviously, its main role is not to increase testosterone. Its main role is actually for sperm function and things like that, for fertility, size of your testicles, blah, blah, blah. But uh, evidence show, is showing that it also has a small role in a late cell function. So I'm gonna put it at basic bitch. Um, you don't need super high FSH levels to increase DHT. And next, we have free testosterone. I gotta put this at the very top because at the end of the day, right it is not total testosterone that covers the dhd it is free testosterone testosterone that is free from shbg so people ask me all the time, how do i increase dhd and i'm like guys every video i make is a dhd slash androgen receptor signaling increasing video right all the things that increase testosterone and free testosterone are going to eventually increase dhd right so how do you increase dhd increase free testosterone Right, and obviously, don't block DHT with stupid shit like finasteride, dutasteride, and all these other compounds. Again, like I always say, there's an exception. If you have prostate cancer or stuff like that, by all means, finasteride max. Uh, but I still don't believe that it's a good risk reward uh, to use finasteride just because you want to keep your hair. Guys, we all gonna lose our hair eventually. It's not that big of a deal, all right? Um, but anyway, um, going off a tangent here. All right, hope this video helps. Join the school community while it's still free. Buy the ebooks. Join the private training group. I'm out.